go. Welcome to the Nut Gallery Review Podcast. We bring you the news on the media that shapes your world. Welcome to episode 179. I'm Jason Schulte. I'm Sean McFadden. I'm Mike Anstead. And uh, I will start this off by saying I did get to go see F9. Um, Ooh, there you go. Yeah, it's just breaking some uh, the highest uh, attended movie since the pandemic hit. So, well, I mean, you you could put out almost anything right now with a full release, and people would flock to it right now, just as we can. Well, <laughs> I'll uh, be on my soapbox for just a quick second, but Do it. there there was about ten seats open in the theater, so that's probably like two hundred people there for a 7.30 showing. Um, and it, Mike's dying. And it, and it, felt, good, it felt good <laughs> to, to uh, enjoy a theater with a bunch of people again um, and everybody reacting to stuff, and especially in that movie where there's a lot to react to. Uh, and then the credits start rolling and people start applauding. So, um, so obviously you were not the only one feeling that way. Yeah. And... They, you know, through the pandemic, a lot of people were concerned that the movie theater industry wouldn't come back. And I think by that, there's a good indication that it's going to come back. Uh, maybe not everywhere like it was and all the little places may not come back, but uh, that was a good indication that people still want to go for the movie experience in a theater. Uh, despite, I think, I think the sentiment is a little different with us here in kind of rural Wisconsin, um, I know there was a lot of people uh, in your theater, but like I've talked, I've talked to people in Chicago and they're like, they're not going to movie theaters anytime soon. Um, so it's a different, different feeling and sentiment in different areas. So well, to each their own, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful <laughs> that we get to see the movie theater industry come back. I know, I know I'm not paying $30 for Black Widow when it comes out. I will be going to the theater. Okay. <laughs> well, it depends on how many of your family go. You might be paying $30 anyways. No, it will it will just be me on a random Tuesday where I could get $5. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The other topic I want to talk about is I saw a list of films that could not be made today without modifications. So I thought that uh, we'd talk about that real quick here at the beginning. What? What kind of modifications? What's our, what's our, well, you'll, you'll catch on real quick. All right. So for example, Aladdin in its original form, not the new live action version, but would not be able to be made today because of its ethnic stereotypes. The, okay. Like the people of Agrabah, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So that's like the, Fantasia angle like you can't you know you just you can't do that movie nowadays I guess so another one would be Animal House due to its crude sexual and racial humor yeah that I mean that was pretty much a product of its time though like (laughs) yeah Uh, Batman Forever could not be made now because we take superhero movies way more serious than we did when that came out Okay. Okay. All right. I'm with you. I got you with that oh, one. Yeah. I was Bat like, nipples. Wait, bat uh, nipples? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, 16 candles due to its attitudes towards sexuality and Asians. Oh, sh- okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Almost, almost swore on the podcast. Forgot about that. And slap shot for its use of slurs. Slap shots loved by a lot of hockey fans, but I've never seen it. So. I, I've seen it, and yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crocodile Dundee for the way that Australians are portrayed and for its transgender jokes. Hmm. Okay. I've, I, 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 think I don't know if I've seen that thing, movie, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> the transgender thing, yeah, sure, I'm with you there, but like they say within the movie that it's a show that he's putting on like like it's his own character then like you know it's it's the whole gimmick that he's got playing it up so i i don't know about that one entirely but continue 
Um, Forrest Gump, because of its views on Vietnam and the AIDS are dated. Uh, Caddyshack for its full because it's just full of racial and sexual dialogue. That's fair, but I mean that's pretty much all eighties all eighties comedies. That's pure <laughs> Bill Murray, man. Uh, Mr. Mom for its outdated gender stereotype. Yes, actually, I agree with that one. <laughs> but, but like, couldn't couldn't you still make it? Like and like, you know, being being a stay at home dad is just fine now. Like, as right, should... and that's what they're playing up is that he was so <laughs> lost being the dad that he's never done that. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I was lost. <laughs> so, <laughs> <I don't> feel... <laughs> we all are. That's our secret. <laughs> this one we just talked about recently is a classic. So, Police Academy, because. Uh, it offends people who support the police and it offends people who don't support the police. Regardless of the, the police connotations, that's just a good movie. Shut up. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. That was fighting words. Uh, <laughs> Porky's because, well, it has some of the same issues that Animal House does, but it also has a spy hole scene that probably would I've, not be viewed I've, highly nowadays. I have not seen Porky's. <clears throat> Neither have I. Well, they cleverly uh, find a way to to peek into the women's shower. Yeah, so, I mean, nice. that's the that's the famous scene. That's what I understood from Spy Hole. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, oh. I, was, I wasn't thinking some James Bond stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, the toy uh, probably is not fly to have a black man purchase to be a rich white kid's toy. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh that's good oh mm. okay sorry continue very dated very dated caught and, me off guard uh, uh, this one shouldn't surprise anybody but Blazing Saddles was on that list oh uh, yeah 100% you could definitely not even get close to that anymore and then finally, uh, Dogma was on the list, and mostly because people just don't have a sense of humor anymore. Fair. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, and, and like that's that's kind of the whole like devil's advocate view towards that article, right? Is that like if a movie if a movie goes for whatever type of vision it's going for like people need to take that with a grain of salt in some cases i definitely definitely think you shouldn't be making no toy movie that you just <laughs> I, that sh- that movie should be delisted I don't, <laughs> you know but I, I don't know like stuff like animal house and stuff like that like it's comedy for that time certainly and you could do that type of movie just with a different spin on its comedy i don't know well, that, that was the point. You would have to modify it. You yeah. wouldn't be able to, to make yeah. the movies. These movies could not be released in today's market. He's He's got a point. Movie releases. And uh, my upbeat soapbox moment of being happy about uh, F9 coming out and there being a full theater. Uh, there's a whole slate of good stuff in July that might be the first time in a year and a half that we can have a hard time picking three. Um, <laughs> that, that would be of the first in a long time. Yeah. Um, starting right off is Boss Baby Family Business on July 2nd. It's rated PG. Tim is now a married dad. Ted is a hedge fund CEO, but a new boss baby with a cutting edge approach and a can do attitude is about to bring them together again and inspire a new family business. Voiced by Alec Baldwin, Lisa Kudrow, James Marston, Jeff Goldblum, Eva, Long- Eva Longoria, Jimmy Kimmel, and is directed by Tim McGrath, who directed Boss Baby, Megamind, Madagascar, and Madagascar 2. Those are some quality movies there. I'm just worried that Boss Baby, how do I put this, had its moments enough that you were like, okay. You know, it, it's a silly premise, but it wasn't a waste watching it. It had some genuinely funny moments. I don't think that they're going to be able to get that again. 
I am guaranteed that I will be going to see this because my son loved Boss Baby. Yeah, well, I mean, 100% disclosure, my favorite part of the whole movie was the alarm clock that was clearly Gandalf being voiced by Patrick Stewart. (laughs) Well, hopefully the alarm clock makes an appearance. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, I, my... My son didn't get into Boss Baby when I tried showing it to him. So he, uh, I don't, I have not seen it. So. Also, July 2nd is the Forever Purge, R for Strong mm-hmm. Bloody Violence and Language. Adela and her husband Juan live in Texas, where Juan is working as a ranch hand for the wealthy Tucker family. Juan impresses a Tucker patriarch, Caleb, but the fuels, but that fuels the jealousy anger of Caleb's son, Dylan. On the morning after the purge, a masked gang of killers attacks the Tucker family, including Dylan's wife and his sister, forcing both families to band together and fight back as the country spirals into chaos and the United States begins to disintegrate around them. So continuation of the purge series uh, mm-hmm. of movies. Uh, looks kind of good. Yeah. Sean's favorite series. Yeah, I've never seen any of it. It's an interesting premise, but... The original Purge was really good, um, and then there's been a couple of them that have been pretty decent, uh, you know, since. So it's a really it's a pretty good series, to be honest. So. I watched the the TV series both seasons, and and that was had its moments where it was really good, and yeah. moments where it wasn't so great. But it it uh, definitely has an interesting premise. July 9th is a movie about a spider called Black Widow. <laughs> just kidding black widow comes out july 9th pg-13 <laughs> following the events of 2016 captain america civil war natasha romanoff finds herself alone and forced to confront a dangerous conspiracy with ties to her past pursued by a force that will stop at nothing to bring her down romanoff must deal with her history as a spy and the broken relationships left in her wake long before she became an avenger Stars Scarlett Johansson, William Hunt, and Michelle Lee. And David Harbour is Red Guardian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm excited for that. I, I'm just excited in general. Like, um, the MCU, like, I loved WandaVision. I loved Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, we could talk about Loki if you want later. Um, but... But for me, like, I'm just, I'm stoked to have another movie. Like, I, I just am. Uh, so yeah. really excited to get to the theater for this one and, and uh, watch it. No, I'm with you. It's, uh, that's definitely one that I wanted to catch in the theater. And so I'm glad that they kind of waited on this one. Yeah. And, and it looks, um, this was part of the new V experience while we were waiting for F9 to start. And so they were doing some interviews with the characters and, and showing some highlights and, and it looks like they've did a really good job putting this together. So, and, and isn't this the last time that Scarlett Johansson will be black widow? Isn't that I kinda... believe that's what they said. Yeah. Yeah. They said that, but I, if you've watched any Loki, like it, it <laughs> anything could happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, July 16th is Escape Room Tournament of Champions. It's PG-13. More adventures in a deadly in a maze of deadly rooms. This is the sequel to 2019's Escape Room, directed by Adam Robitel, who also directed Escape Room. And again, this trailer looks kind of interesting because it is basically a jet. It's kind of a cross between Saw and uh, an Escape games. Room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but looks like the Looks like it could be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Also, July 16th is Die in a Gunfight. It's R for violence, language, and drug use. Ben and Mary, who shares an eagerness to break from their confines of their lives, it fuels their passion for each other and leads to an all-out struggle for their love against a backdrop of corporate espionage, revenge, and long-standing feud between their families. Stars Helen Hunt, Olivia Munn, and Diego Boneta. And... Anyone else want to weigh in before I say more? I didn't see Olivia Munn in the trailer at all. 
But um, this, I kind of like where they're going with this because this feels like a movie that's not taking itself overly serious. Yeah. So what you got, Jay? I think that this will one day be a classic. I think it'll it falls into the vein of like Lucky Number Eleven, Red, Smoking Slevin. Aces, um, all of those uh, kind of Smoking Aces, particularly where it's yeah. got this kind of action heavy piece to it, but it's also centered around kind of a com- comedic uh, as well. You gonna go to the theaters for this one? I'm not sure. Guess we'll have to see what my top three become. <laughs> I I just like the the look of it, and uh, uh, as my fiance pointed out when we were watching the trailer for this, she's like, "This feels like uh, kind of a, a modern take on Romeo and Juliet." Oh, so <laughs> have to see how accurate that take is. Yes, I say. Olivia Munn. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking at the the casting, <laughs> but I would say Alexandra Daddario. Maybe they there. maybe Olivia was early cast and dropped out or something. And oh, they maybe. didn't update the info. Did I you got. say she's not bad, <laughs> Alexandra Daddario? <laughs> she, I mean, if you're gonna take it that way. She... <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I—that's the way I thought you took it. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I—I bet I she's she's been a good actress, but oh, yeah, okay. I mean, also that way. I mean, I will not deny that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, do we de-evolved? Yeah. Uh, well, going from good to bad is Space Jam: A New Legacy on oh. July sixteenth. Don't uh, you scoff! This is going to be the the Oscars picture of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't make me swear twice in the same podcast. <laughs> Do I need to read this or can we? No, we can. I'm sad that this is being made because while Space Jam was never, how do I put this? Space Jam was never any kind of award winning movie, but it knew what it was. It was just a, a campy little. Yeah, I oh. accidentally bumped it. Hopefully that doesn't. And that's all I have to say about that. (laughs) Hopefully it doesn't screw up the first part of that. Uh, Anyways, Space Jam. Yep, moving on. Um, No, whoa, whoa, sir. Because I disagree wholeheartedly with Sean. (laughs) Do you actually? Yes, I'm. I'm actually going to be good. Yeah, I think it will be fun. I, I mean, Space Jam isn't good. Like, like good by classic standards, right? Like, this is going to be a fun movie. I a one LeBron James is actually a pretty good actor in my opinion. Uh, the stuff that he's been in, he's shown some some good uh, good timing, good comedic prowess. Like I I believe that he's a decent actor. Um, I and on, on this point, because Michael Jordan was not a great actor. So yeah, so you like you're already this. you're already taking a step up with LeBron. Um, and then. Who want, Who doesn't want more Looney Tunes? Like I, I'm just I'm I'm actually really excited for this movie. Um, and I think I think it's gonna be a fun watch. I I I don't I'm not gonna call it like good because the original Space Jam is not technically a good movie, um, in that sense. But but like it might be good. You never know. I hope it tanks so we never have to see LeBron on a big screen again. Anyways. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, just went that way. <laughs> uh, July 23rd, Snake Eyes. It's PG-13. Snake Eyes, G.I.J. Origin stars Henry Golding as Snake Eyes, a tenacious loner who is welcome into an ancient Japanese clan called the Rashikeg. Sure. Anyone G.I. Joe lore that knows more than I do on that? I do not. After saving... Nope. The life of their appear- their hair apparent upon arrival in Japan, they teach Snake Eyes the ways of the ninja warrior while also providing something he's been longing for, a home. And this is directed by Robert Schwenke, who directed the Divergent movies, R.I.P.D. and Red. So I have somehow gotten Red into this podcast twice. Once again. <laughs> this is a good movie. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited by this one. It looks really good. I 
have you been watching the other gi joe movies yeah oh okay i I have not because they i mean from the outside looking in they kind of look like generic action movies and so i was kind of staying away from that so am i wrong on that or is it just like you're watching it because it is generic action movies the the first I, so I, I'm probably in the minority, but I like the first one better than the second one. Even though the second one had, you know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson and stuff like that. You know, I thought I thought that Channing Tatum and uh, what's the other actor in that first one just had really good chemistry, um, and I thought the movie was a fun fun film. So I don't know. Um, this one I think is I'm 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 excited to watch this. It's it's not going to be a theater thing for me, but it, it will definitely be something that I. I mean, Snake Eyes is probably the most notable J. Joe character, so like it will just be fun. I I can agree with you, Mike. I actually think the first one is better. So okay, cool. That we can actually uh, accomplish together. Hey, hey uh, there's an agreement. Yeah. Uh, I'll, <laughs> now back to this LeBron thing. <laughs> oh, he's overrated in every way. Did, okay. did you see how he walked out on his team after getting his butt kicked twice? He walked out. He walked out on his team. So <laughs> ridiculous. Jay's got some feelings. Some July feelings. 23rd uh, from <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> is the movie Old. A chilling, mysterious new thriller about a family on a tropical holiday who discovered that the secluded beach where they are relaxing for a few hours is somehow causing them to age rapidly, reducing their entire lives into a single day. Uh, speaking of M. Night, he is self-funding the film with the hopes that he will receive a bigger profit if the film is successful. You know, I was kind of intrigued by this movie, and then, unfortunately for him, I saw the name and went, ah, no thanks. Because, I, man... I don't know. Shyamalan has burned me one too many times here. I've, I've heard, I think maybe from you guys that I should relax on that and, and give this one a chance, but no, no. no. Okay. <laughs> Not from us. I don't know where. Sh- Shyamalama ding dong made, <laughs> uh, made avatar. The last airbender. He should not be making that, any movies. That movie I'm sorry. does not exist. <laughs> should not be making any movies. Well, six cents was good, right? Right. We can fantastic. we can agree on that, right? That's yep. the only reason why he can get a job in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, there, what's that other one that's actually decent? The Village. The Village. Yeah, nope. the, vi- the Village. Multi- the Village was reviewed well. That's you think why. LeBron's a bad actor? So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say he's a bad actor. I just uh, <laughs> cannot support him after walking out on his team. <laughs> Anyways, July thirtieth, Jungle Cruise. Set in the earliest early 20th century and takes place in the Amazon jungle. Dwayne Johnson will play a boat captain who takes his sister and her brother on a mission to find a tree believed to possess healing powers. And this is coming from Disney. And they already have a board game to go along with it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's based on a Disney ride, and that's worked surprisingly okay. Uh Ah, my fancy and I disagreed on this one. I saw the trailer and went, meh, okay, okay, whatever. And she was just like, oh my gosh, we got to see that. And I was like, really? Uh, okay, sure. So. <laughs> I think it looks decent. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, also, July 30th is Stillwater. An American oil rig roughneck from Oklahoma travels to Marseille to visit his estranged daughter who is in prison for a motor murder not a motor a murder she claims she did not commit (laughs) confronted with language barriers cultural differences and a complicated legal system bill makes it his personal mission to exonerate his daughter it stars matt damon and abigail braislin this also looks pretty good to me um so i yeah it looks intriguing um this is not going to be one I'd see in the theater, though. I it, There's too much here to pick from that it would make. If yeah. this came out three months ago, yeah. it would probably be a top three. And 
Is that Abigail Breslin? Is that the actress's yeah. name? Yeah. Okay. Who did you think it was? I, I was just I didn't think that was her. But continue on. Yeah, I don't know enough to contradict you. All right, and finally on July thirtieth is the Green Knight. There's rated R, an epic fantasy adventure based on a timeless legend, the Green Knight. Tells the story of Sir Gawain. King Arthur's reckless and headstrong nephew who embarks on a daring quest to confront the Green Knight, a gigantic emerald skin stranger and a tester of men. Stars Dev Patel. Yeah, I actually think this one looks really good. I do as well. I do as well. Oh, <laughs> so should what? I disagree? <laughs> we you all can. Agree? <laughs> So I don't know. Uh, we used to, when we used to pick our top three, we used to have the list in front of us that everyone could look at. So I don't know. It might be harder for you now. Um, but I would go with my three is the Green Knight. My two is Snake Eyes. And my one is Black Widow. I think this. Ooh. Well, my one would be Black Widow. And my two would be Green Knight. And... It's the only two that come to my mind right off the bat. Uh, my three, <laughs> my three would be Snake Eyes. Two would be Space Jam. One would be Black Widow. Space Jam, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, mm, ooh, mm. Don't I do not disagree with you, but uh, mm. I'm just taking a look at the list. See if I come up with a three. Uh, <laughs> Mm, no <laughs> sorry <laughs> i don't want to see boss baby um i don't want to see the forever purge i want to see black widow i escape room tournament champions is not something i'm going to want to see in the theater oh okay i do have a number three die in a gunfight it was close i i could have that could have been there uh Again, if it would have come out three months ago, it would have been a top top two. Oh, a hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> but. So oh, it's good. To, good to see a good list again. And yeah. Actually, I know there's a, a three. You know, August is looking good too. So well, let's hope that keeps that momentum going. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we have got our home releases here. And we have got uh, defending Jacob in our opening the month off here. Uh, it's Chris Evans defending his son in a murder trial. Uh, evidently, we've got a whole lot of, uh, you know, defending uh, children from, from murder. Um, this one, though, they, they play it a little bit more like you're not entirely sure if the son's actually innocent and the, the dad mm. seems to be going a little crazy. Um, <laughs> Uh, then week of July 13th, we've got Mortal Kombat, which uh, I did see uh, when it was released on HBO Max, and I did enjoy it. Um, the new character, um, I, I, I spent most of the movie going, all right, who is he going to be? Yeah, but just get him out of the movie. <laughs> I Okay, that is the one point, is I disagree with his character being in the movie there's a plethora of mortal kombat characters you could have done one of those you didn't need to make yeah i think and i think their i think their reasoning their reasoning behind it was they had to put a new character in to bring in a new era of people that would be interested in mortal kombat and i completely disagree with that cole is literally the dumbest character in movie history anyway (laughs) Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Maybe not movie history. That might have been taken it too far. But I mean, I'm we got upset. LeBron coming out in Space Jam soon, so wow. <laughs> wow. he's playing himself. So he's not a character. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, I enjoyed it. Uh, if you enjoy uh, the Mortal Kombat game series, uh, I think this is right up your alley. Uh, if you enjoy you know kung fu movies i think this is up your alley it's it's actually got a budget the special effects yeah top notch it's i have some time. strong gripes with that film when we don't we don't have to go into it you know other than cole uh but 
but it All is right. still it is still a fun watch. Okay, <laughs> it was, there we it go. was really really fun. I mean, the R rating truly helps it. Um, the fight sequences were amazing, um, and for that, I think it's a I think it's a watch in and of itself. But definitely have graves. All right. Uh, then we have Wrath of Man with Jason Statham, and that's the extent of my notes on it because it's a Jason Statham movie. Um. <laughs> Oh come on! Don't laugh. You you know what I mean. <laughs> Something happens to you know somebody in his family, and he's got to go be Jason Statham. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure it's like a Liam Neeson film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then of course we've got a new SpongeBob movie. <laughs> uh, that's, that's that's all you're gonna get from me on that. Uh, we have held <laughs> a couple held in a vacation home against their will. Um, uh, both my fiance and I, when we saw this, we looked at each other and went, that was, that was dumb. So not, not high reviews from years truly on that one. Um, <clears throat> then we had, so you watch this or you just watch the trailer. I watched the trailer. Oh, okay. Um, week of July 20th, we've got dream horse where a community raises the money and then raises a racehorse. Um, then we have Jacob's wife. Uh, essentially, think of uh, Stepford Wives, except uh, she turns into a vampire. Uh, <laughs> and then we have Feral State, which is about a cult uh, it, they don't say it, but it's clearly a cult, and uh, they're basically a cult of robbers. So they they go and they take what they want because they can. And that is the end of your uh, at home releases. I would like to see Mortal Kombat, and I don't mind a good Jason Jason Statham movie. So Wrath of Man would be all right too. Yeah, yeah, it's. As as uh, my associate, Mr. Ansta, has pointed out, Mortal Kombat does have a few eyebrow-raising moments. But overall, I believe it is an enjoyable movie. Yes, enjoy- enjoyable is a great word. Um, I am, like, quick side note, I went down, I've been down a huge rabbit hole uh, in Mortal Kombat listening to a podcast called Mortal Podcast, um, and it shares the perspective of the of each character within the timeline. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of got kind of got upset about some things because I was totally into the into the movie or into the. You got got lore. a little too close to the uh, the property, hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. It happens. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Video game releases, Mike. What do you got? Let's take a look here. Um, we got a long list, so I'm going to kind of uh, just go through the highlights. Um, so a game that's already been out, but it is coming to the next-gen consoles for a next-gen upgrade is A Plague Tale Innocence. Um, I have heard nothing but high praise for this game. It's storytelling and uh, its character the characters. Like just, I've heard nothing but good things. So definitely take a look. Uh, I believe it's in Game Pass, if you have uh, Game Pass. So that out um we have monster hunter stories 2 wings of ruin it's coming to the switch and pc on july 9th uh it's monster hunter guys plain and simple <laughs> um, if you like the series you'll where the heart leads yeah <clears throat> yes uh where the heart leads uh coming to playstation 5 and playstation uh 4 so definitely take a look at that we have Lost at Sea. Um, I was looking at this uh, Lost at Sea one, um, and uh, it looks like a really, really good develop, uh, indie, indie game. Uh, it's coming to both uh, the PS5, Xbox Series X, and the PC, so just just the new, new gen consoles. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, F1 2021, if you're into the F1 series, comes out July 16th. Observer System Redux comes to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One July 16th. And believe it or not, we're not done with Space Jam. <laughs> Space Jam, A New Legacy, the video game, comes out to Xbox consoles 
on July 16th, going straight into Game Pass if you want to try it out. This is, uh, you know, this is basically a 90s brawler. It has the pixel art with it, and it's a 90s brawler. So um, I'm excited to try it out. Uh, also, Xbox partnered with Space Jam for some really cool controllers. I don't know if you guys uh, seen those, but they are really, really cool. So uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD comes to the Switch on July 16th as well. Uh, this is something that I might be interested in playing at a later time. I think I got a lot of games going on right now, but they got rid of the motion controls, so you don't have to solely do motion controls because this was only a Wii game. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'd be excited to go through it without it. So, all right, another indie game coming to the Xbox Series X, and Xbox One, and PC on July 20th is Death Store. It's kind of like this. Uh, god view like dungeon crawler uh but basically you're um when when you die you basically go to a different a different area and you just continue playing so um it's got that like diablo kind of style combat um it's a roguelite as well so definitely uh definitely get your eyes on that uh dust door looks pretty cool hmm. Oh, let's see. Monster Harvest comes to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch and PC on July 20th. Uh, that is the name kind of speaks for itself. You are raising monsters. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically the gameplay. <laughs> I was, I, you can't say much more about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, comes to the Xbox Series console, so the new gen on July 27th. Um, I kind of want to try this out. Have you guys seen any footage of Flight Simulator? I mean, Flight Simulator has been kind of the same framework since like the 90s. So it's just they update the graphics and kind of update the, yeah. the planes and everything. So. so so this one, like some of the video, like you could be watching a 4K video of it and it looks like real life. <laughs> like that's how good it looks. Um, and so I'm excited to try it out because uh, I do have the new Xbox. So be looking forward to checking it out. Oh my goodness, the list is long. Sorry, guys. Um, Samurai Warriors 5 comes to the new Xbox, but not PlayStation 5. Comes to PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on July 27th. The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles comes to PS4, Switch, and PC, as well as the Great Ace Attorney Adventures on the same date to the same consoles, July 27th. I know the Great Ace Attorney is definitely a fan favorite series, so absolutely uh, cool that it is coming to the Switch and the PlayStation 4 and the PC. There you go. Um, let's see here. Uh Blaster Master Zero. Um, it's already been reviewed, coming to new gen consoles. And then finally, The Ascent uh, on July 29th, as well as Blaster Master Zero. The Ascent is a Xbox exclusive, uh, basically kind of like a twin stick shooter, but dungeon crawler type deal uh, set in a cyberpunk uh, like setting. So that one looks pretty cool. Again, day one game pass if you want to try it out. That's our list. Sorry, it's kind of a well, <laughs> well done for powering through that. I think out of that yeah, group, I, I think I'm, <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. I think out of that group, my uh, the one that I'm most excited for is the Ascent. It looks really, really cool. Um, gameplay looks fun. Uh, yeah, the, the level design looks really cool. Um, I'm excited for a Plague Tale Innocence. I, you know, it's obviously already out, but having the new gen upgrade, I'm uh, pretty excited for. So, I'm I think I'm going to download that because it it goes straight into Game Pass, I believe as well. So, I like Game Pass, by the way. We can tell. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. We uh, games. sliding into uh, then the the cult classic or the movie classic. It is yes. time for the movie classic. I called it the cult classic, man. So I'm I'm slipping here tonight. You're about a hundred episodes late. I know, right? To that, to that, In uh, old habits. Um, well, take over. Uh, it was your pick. Okay. Uh, I decided that we should finally tackle a movie that has been called 
it's it's been on lists of top 100 movies of all time and as you can see over uh jason's shoulder there um i picked 1972's the godfather i had not ever seen it uh so this was a first viewing for me nope nope you picked the godfather (laughs) <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i was like what are you gonna argue with the year you said it wrong <laughs> no business you said it's the godfather <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm trying to get avoid us doing that because you know then we'll be doing that you come, the entire you time come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding oh my god you ask me a favor <laughs> um so yeah that was uh it, it's easily in pretty much every top 100 movies of all time list and i personally had never seen it and so i figured it was time to take care of that honestly um jay had you seen the godfather before i had not watched it either okay mike three for three (laughs) okay so this was all of ours first viewing of it so um Mm -hmm. i'm I'm going to give my opening thoughts or should we kind of do like a, like a back cover kind of thing here? Why don't you do a back cover first and then do your opening thoughts? All right. Sounds good. Uh, so the Godfather, as I said, in, and, in and this is part one. So we're just talking about part one. Today. Yes. We are only talking about yes. the movie called the Godfather. There was no, I, full <laughs> disclosure. I did not, I didn't even finish this. I didn't even finish the first movie because just life came. Um, and so I'm pretty far in it, but I just didn't even finish. There's no way I was finishing all three. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, it was three hours on its own. So yeah. Uh, The Godfather, Don Vito Corleone, is the head of the Corleone Mafia family in New York. He is at the event of his daughter's wedding. Michael, Vito's youngest son and decorated World War II Marine, is also present at the wedding. Uh, Michael seems to be uninterested in being part of the family business. Vito is a powerful man and is kind to all of those who respect him, but is ruthless against those who do not. But when a powerful and treacherous rival wants to sell drugs and needs the Don's influence for the same, Vito refuses to do it. What follows is a clash between Vito's fading old values and the new ways which may cause Michael to do the thing he was most reluctant in doing and wage a mob war against all other mafia families, which could tear the Corleone family apart. Whew. And of course, the tagline is an offer you can't refuse. Which is said once in the movie. Uh, twice. I believe. No, okay. it's not. It's it's. I think it's said twice, but yeah. I think I think maybe Don Carleon only says it once, maybe, but uh, I know Michael says it as well. Okay. So. <laughs> Cause Michael's like, because uh, he's te- at the very yeah, beginning. He, actually, he's telling he his girl. He's telling his girlfriend the the story, and he's like. He made him an offer you can't refuse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll give you that one. Um, so <laughs> here are my thoughts. So first off, I knew this was a long movie going in. And then um, I paused to, because I had to go to the bathroom. I had to, you know, and I looked and I'm like, oh my God, we are only halfway through this movie. <laughs> um, it is a three hour movie. So know that going in. Um, however, I will say this, um, I thought that the story in this movie, uh, kind of just nabbed you and pulled you in. And I, I'm like, how are they going to end this? Where are they going to end this? Cause it's just seems like it just keeps rolling along there and you're, you're curious about what's going on. Um, but you just, you have no idea. Um, I thought the casting was just i i i don't know that i've seen a movie do better um what i really kind of got a kick out of is seeing some of the actors that i know in 1972 and they yeah. looked like babies <laughs> i mean Diane Keaton i didn't even recognize i had to be told that that was Diane Keaton um Al Pacino at the start of the movie does not look like Al Pacino he does not. 
And he also then, he also doesn't have the Pacino voice. He like, does he not. Did, he doesn't have the voice. It's like you you sound like you haven't smoked for fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then Al Pacino, of course, by the end of the movie, you're like, oh, there he is. That's Al Pacino. <laughs> um, yeah, Robert Duvall as Tom uh, or Tommy. Uh, just all of them seeing them young, it was like, whoa, okay. And then you realize how many big names were actually in this movie, whether or not they were big at the time, but holy moly. Um, that's kind of my, my opening thoughts on it. Uh, whoever wants to take it next. <clears throat> Go ahead, Jason. I, you know, I'm not going to disagree with you on most of your thoughts there, Sean. Okay. For a first time in whatever. Uh, I also agree. I didn't, you know, I, I had to take a bathroom break at halfway point too. Um, but I didn't feel like, like that was, I've seen two hour movies that felt like three hour movies. This was a three hour movie that felt like two hours. Agreed. Um, Go ahead. Uh, I will not um, dispute that, that this, this is a movie of actors that were uh, not only were they who who's of the time, but they were up and comings. Um, I didn't even, pick it up that that was Robert Duvall until way late. Like I looked it up later right? and like, Oh my God, that was him. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, like Marlon Brando, this was probably like at his, like, you know, at his peak. Um, and, and that, and for my money, his best acting ever, but continue. So, I mean, it was great to see him in that and, you know, just dominate the screen. Um, but, but, and you guys probably know this is coming, but that opening scene of the wedding, th- it's got to be one of the most beautifully creative sh- uh, sequences filmed ever. Um, you know, you got these deals going on in the room, you got a wedding going on outside, you got guests arriving, you got FBI's, you got photographers. I mean, you just got all of these elements just circling this event. Um, you know, the, the, the long lost son that kind of stepped away from the family shows up, uh, you know, won't take the picture until they're there. And, and you're like, in any, in any other situation, this would be a disaster. But in yeah. their world, this, this, everything happens. This is normal. And it sets up everything else that happens in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, to her <clears throat> husband kind of being a scumbag. Um to some of the deals that he brokers during this wedding are, you know, come full circle. Uh, it, it's just so many elements of that, probably 30 minutes. It's probably a 30 minute sequence of this wedding. Uh, it's not it's, short. That is correct. It, it's uh, it's just so brilliant in, in the way it was done. And you can, you know, Francis Ford Coppola really came out of like, you know, pulled this one out and just like, who does a 30 minute intro sequence that sets up a movie, but, and it might even be longer than that. Um, I wasn't paying that close of attention, but there's just so much that comes out of that and established that, that it's just, it's just brilliant. I just think of yeah. all the layers of what's going mm-hmm. on just in that one shot. And, and the movie does that a couple of times. Um, I think like when Michael goes off to Italy, there's some, there's a sequence in there that's pretty, pretty complex um the whole relationship that he has yeah. over there yeah yeah and then later when when things transpire and, and michael's kind of in charge it also gets so many layers um so yeah i'm just i'm just really impressed but that that first scene really kind of caught me of like i'm sitting here just like geeking out about how creative and complex that scene was so I think it had me hooked at that point. I didn't have to uh, sell me anymore. <laughs> you know what my favorite part of that, that opening scene was? Was uh, Luca uh, Brazzi, uh, Brazzini or whatever the heck his name is. Luca, the big you know bruiser guy, <laughs> practicing his lines before he's actually going to go talk to the Don. And I'm like, oh, this is so good. This is a guy that knows... Like, hey, I'm not real good at, you know, speaking uh, clearly. So I got to practice this to make sure I get it down before I talk to the Don. And he even still stumbles when he gets in front of the Don. And I'm like, oh, that's so perfect because they're showing that even though he practiced, 
he's still kind of trying to get this through and it's like oh yeah he's very loyal but like ah man just the the speaking clearly was not his thing and i, I was kind of like man that's a nice humanizing touch for what's a mobster movie and i was like that's really nice i like that and and that goes right into what i was kind of saying is because <clears throat> michael and his girlfriend are having a conversation while that's happening yeah so yeah. again you know multiple aspects of one scene isn't just one scene it's there's multiple pieces of that scene happening yeah. and, and i and I like the Don's re- response when he gets in there and flubs it. He just like blows it off. Like, yeah, I know you're trying. <laughs> oh yeah. That's just like, Hey, you know, this guy's, he's trying, he's not insulting me. He's trying to show as much respect as he can. He's just not getting the words across. And it's like, yeah, all right. You do you Luca. <laughs> you do uh, you. <laughs> what about you, uh, Mr. Anstead? Well, um, I love mafia movies. I, I love, I actually, I actually really love this genre. It's one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorite uh, ones recently was actually the Irishman. I don't know if you saw that um, on that Netflix, uh, but Robert De Niro, some of the old, some of, some of the, you know, the, um, the Mount Rushmore's of the, of these types of films, like Robert De Niro, you got Al Pacino, uh, Pesci, you know, all those guys. And, So that movie, The Irishman, had somewhat of the same pace as The Godfather does. And it's a long movie, but each little scene, each each character development just like brings you in. And as you guys were saying, despite this being long, like I'm enjoying every second of it uh, because not only do you have great scenes shot as as jason uh said about the about the first you know opening salvo like the 30 minutes first 30 minutes of the movie but you also have you also have characters and actors rather that are just just so brilliant like holy cow just like they're oh okay (laughs) uh they're acting i'm not gonna do that (laughs) um if you're watching the video version sorry um Anyway, their acting is just, it's just phenomenal. And, you know, I just continually want to watch it. Um, you know, it, it just brings me in. So I really enjoy this movie. Uh, it's definitely a classic. Oh, my goodness. Like, I, I'm sorry to jump the gun, guys. It's a classic. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, critics before us have, de- have declared it such. Um, and and I'll, I'll kind of jump in with you there. Um, I don't disagree with them on this one. Uh, this one, I think, does if nothing else, um, and and I think this is kind of one of Jay's things. Just some of the shots that they take, it's like that's not a set. That is, they're at the hotel. They're at this location. They are. They might be shooting in like you know a, a backyard somewhere, but you know that is that location. That's not something that's been constructed, and you can tell um for that and uh, several of the shots um i actually said out loud holy crap that is gorgeous and just the the cinematography alone um it, it's a masterpiece and i don't use that word a lot but holy crap it was fantastic i was really impressed another another thing that i thought was really cool is that um <laughs> you know the don the godfather himself you know he his family surrounds him too that's true and his family's got his back but he's also not dumb like one of his one of his sons is a lawyer like he he has like he has in his family the pieces that he needs to be successful as as the godfather so i thought that was really cool too and and the the scene where he's talking to somebody he's like yep i'm a lawyer and like i know all of new york's top lawyers Uh, who are you like i only have one client like, oh, well, that probably should have keyed you off right there. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's um, if, and that is probably um, connected to that character was the only scene in the movie that I really quite didn't understand um, because the, the character, the lawyer is the consigliere and they cut him as that later in the movie and i'm like why and it, it's it, 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 that is the one part of this movie that i felt a little out of place and it kind of felt a little bit more like 
Michael was trying to, you know, flex his muscles to be kind of this old style, you know, Don running things. But that was the one part that I was like, eh, eh, and eh. that didn't feel, I didn't feel right. And it, I don't think it quite fit with the, the character, but that was just the one part. Uh, the, the one part that I thought felt a little out of place was the whole like Las Vegas piece. Um, I don't know if that's going to resurface in part two or part three. That's my guess. But I don't, I didn't quite understand because they didn't really move the entire family. They're still where they were. Well, as the movie ends, they're selling off all their assets and yeah. they're moving. So, well, that, that at least ties into uh, Michael saying, hey, you know, we're going to take the family and go legit. So, you know, and I think that is setting up him trying to do so Mm -hmm. but you know and i guess i don't want to end this without saying this is no matter how ruthless he could have been as the don uh that that's marlon barando's character um you know as the godfather he still saw drugs as not being what he wanted to be involved in he he had his own still moral code of I'm going, I, I'm okay with gambling. I'm okay with the things I'm into, but I'm not okay with drugs. And, you know, this, this spurs the whole, you know, two thirds of the movie is centered around the fact that he didn't, yeah. he, he didn't want to go down that road mm-hmm. um, and in really establishes this character as like, I have, I do things that are illegal. I do things that are legal. It doesn't really hurt anybody. I'm not doing this. And um and d- despite what others had advised him and yeah you know i just really again he added this depth to this character that i'm not going to be bullied into doing something i don't want to do i don't care who you are mm-hmm. and yeah. and i kind of appreciated that about him um, on, on a funny side though when they like carried him up the stairs in that mansion uh he had hid weights under his body uh well, he was laying there in that bed. And so the, the other people who picked him up to carry him are like, gosh, this is heavy. <laughs> and, and, and when they got done, he revealed that he had these weights under him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, and also, probably my, my other favorite part of the movie was uh, my fiance and I kind of uh, going, oh, who's going to be the next guy to, to get to get it to you know to get off to get murdered and it was like oh 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 that guy's gonna get it and <laughs> a lot of the times we were wrong but when we were right ooh, that validation <laughs> maybe we need to develop the godfather drinking game jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, i'll pass <laughs> mm. <laughs> didn't mean you couldn't do like grape juice or something come on <laughs> um Anything else, or you want me to start closing this one out? You know, I think we've rambled on quite a ways for this, but uh, all right, I, um, I'm I'm good. If you are, if you guys are good, we can close the door on this one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna say easily yes. This one deserves its status as a classic. I I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I'm probably gonna end up watching part two here sooner rather than later because I'm curious where they're going with this. Uh, with the storyline and I'm a little upset at myself having waited this long to have seen it, but I'm glad right. that I saw it and I'm, yeah. I'm glad it's classic. I have one other thing to add that I meant to add late earlier. So yeah, get over it. <laughs> um, you know, we've heard other movies that have been deemed classics and, and Scarface comes to mind and, mm-hmm. you know, we were eh, about we it. We were kind of blah about that one. Yep. Uh, so just because others before us have rated it a classic doesn't mean that that uh, we necessarily always agree. So in this case, I think it gets what it, it's been touted to be. It is, yeah. is certainly the film they say it is. And I think we've proven that over the long dialogue. Uh, and I would encourage people to watch it who haven't. It, it's, it's worth the three hours. Uh, and I'm have a feeling that you'll walk away from that going i need to watch part two much like sean has just declared so mm-hmm. easily i would say it's a classic we are in agreement 
It happens from time to time. <laughs> Rare, but yes, it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that brings right. us to uh, what have we been up to lately? Um, I rewatched Django the other day. Ooh, uh, nice. another longer movie, but another one that doesn't feel long at all. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it as much the second time. It's been a while since I've seen it, uh, so I I was glad I took that time to watch it uh, again. It it is it is good. If you haven't seen Django, I would I would recommend it. Uh, has you know again, co- it's quite complex in the different pieces to that to that movie, uh, which you come to expect from Quentin Tarantino and his writing and his dialogue. So uh, nice. Um, I'm reading Girl on the on the Train by Paula Hawkins. She's a uh, from England writing. Uh, it was it's a very interesting book because. The lead character is kind of a drunk, lost her job, living with a friend in a room. Um, her ex-husband is remarried. Uh, she's struggling to get over that. But the reason it's the girl on the train is because she drives by the same location or, or rides on a train past the same location. And, and she's seen this husband and wife and kind of has fantasized about who they are and what they are. Um, even made it up names for them. And then all of a sudden, this the woman that she's been kind of watching through this train window every day as she goes by mm-hmm. turns out missing. And, uh, you know, she's her being drunk. No one believes her that she saw someone else with her the day before when she drove when she went by. Um, and then it has a whole bunch of layers of um, other things like part of her drinking came about because she couldn't get pregnant and her husband was upset. And uh, so there, there's just a bunch of other like mental health layers layered into this story. So I've been kind of enjoying that book. It's really not out of, it's way out of my normal comfort zone for reading. Uh, mm-hmm. So um, as part of a book club. So I thought I would, would uh, read it to be able to contribute uh, as part of my, it's a book club with, with the, uh, people I work with. So nice. Um, I'm still playing a lot of MLB, the show, um, like all the time playing it, love the game. Glad it's finally on the Xbox so I can mm-hmm. enjoy it as well. And then um, I just purchased my last um, uh, newest game. I just purchased was rust, uh, the console edition, and I cannot stop playing it. Uh, like I, like was driving down the high the road today and I saw trees along the road. I'm like, I could harvest that. Uh, uh, um, it's intense. You have to, uh, it's a survival game of probably uh, very challenging survival game. You got to harvest materials, protect yourself, get a base sleeping bag. Um, and people are out to kill you and they, you got to harvest metal. You got to, it, it's just, and then once you get your base built, it starts decaying. So you have to build a cupboard to keep it from decaying. Cause if you don't, it'll decay and people can just waltz in, you know, a wall will just disappear and people will be able to get to your stuff that you're, you've uh, spent a lot of time collecting and dying over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, there's some neat places. There's like a parkour challenge that you can go on to parkour, try to parkour. get, to get to a, top of an old dome and up there there's a bunch of loot um, so i've been able to accomplish that a few times um, but yeah it's been it's been quite challenging i luckily the one frustrating piece is the game completely resets every month so last thursday of every month they just wipe everything so everything regardless they, of like where you're at yeah because it because because of how free flowing the building is, people build up these huge bases, and it just starts to lag the server down uh, to where it'll start crashing. So you oh. like towards the end of the month. So it just wiped uh, a week ago, and the server it would crash frequently just because the yeah. server couldn't maintain <clears throat> all of these huge buildings that people have built. Um, I personally wish that they would up the uh, like after you like have the tiered level of decay so after you get to a certain level it starts costing twice as much 
mm. and that would prevent people from building these huge bases um, maybe a little more so they wouldn't have to wipe but it, it it's frustrating because you work really hard the, the only yeah. thing that you get to keep is most of the time you get to keep your blueprints that you found uh, so you can build you can make base you know standard things uh, mm, stone right. pickaxe stone uh, like hatchet um, and then when you find the pattern or you find equipment, you can research the blueprints, you can make other stuff. And, and generally the blueprints go from month to month, unless there's a major update. Uh, and then you may lose those as well. And oh. there's some safe areas. So you can go into safe areas and, and, and sell off your scrap or have your scrap converted to, to other stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's addicting because of the, like at any moment, someone could be breaking into your base so it's hard to like walk away. Uh, you also like right now I have my base set at it, it'll four days before it'll start decaying. So I know within the next four days, I have to log in and put more materials in there. <laughs> um, otherwise it's going to disappear and you can update your upgrade, your walls. You start out with like a twig walls and then you update it to wood and then you update it to stone and then you can update it to, uh, metal and then you can do an armored wall so you have to collect different materials to get to that and based on what kind of walls you have that's the kind of materials you need in your in your cupboard to uh, keep it from decaying so if you have stone walls then you have to have stone in there uh, so it, it's just really complex and i love how open the building is and the yeah. research and things and just the luck of finding something, you can smash a, a barrel and find clothes, or you might find a blueprint or a knife, or it's just really challenging and really hard to walk away from. So if you don't <laughs> want that kind of crack, don't buy it. <laughs> but if anyone listens to this and is playing it, let me know, because I could use some team members. It's easier <laughs> with a group uh, than just going solo all the time, uh, because one person could be gathering materials and the other one could be on lookout and protecting them uh, would certainly say it would have saved me a few times from dying. Uh, but that is my, uh, it's, it's consumed a better part of my last like four days. Nice. There you go. Nice. <laughs> um, I have just beaten uh, the entirety of Starcraft two campaign mode. Um, just did that this last week and that was whew, that was that was a bit of an emotional experience there uh, I'd played the Terran the human campaign I mean back when Starcraft 2 first came out but then I kind of just walked away from it and I never played any the other ones but now I was like all right so I started playing multiplayer and I was like you know what I'm enjoying this uh, so I was getting into the campaign mode of it and trying the other ones. And I was like, okay, all right. So got fully invested in the story and everything like that. So I finally beaten that. So now I can kind of set that aside and, and, and move on for a little bit there. Um, as far as like TV and movies, um, keeping up with, uh, with Loki, of course, and then sneaking in uh, other shows when you can there, but uh, I'm actually, a couple of days behind on watching the last one. So I got to be, be careful when I'm, you know, browsing in the internet there to, to not <laughs> come across any spoilers. Um, as far as reading there, just kind of been uh, reading some, a bunch of short stories and novellas kind of clearing up some of the, the backlog that has created, but uh, yeah, that's, that's more or less it for me, you know, plant, Planning a wedding, taking a lot of time. So there's that. <laughs> Good news is you have over a year yet. I have over a year. That is absolutely correct. There you go. <laughs> um, I have been, uh, I started started reading the, the sequel series to Percy Jackson, the Heroes of Olympus stuff. Um, oh, that's good. Rick Reardon. So yeah, I, I'm literally only like 20 pages in. So it's still, uh, it's. It's a good read. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited. I've read I've read the Percy Jackson series and I love that series. So I just never got around to continuing some of his other work. So um, it's gonna be you know the that. the hardest thing for me when I started that is it's set in the same world and I'm like, 
but where's but where's Percy? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so speaking of that, let's move over to video games. I've been playing Mass Effect Trilogy, um, mm. Legendary Edition, and I beat Mass Effect 1. And nice. Mass Effect 1, to me, I'm saying it, it is one of the best science fiction stories I've ever played, watched, read. I've just i'm just calling it wow. i loved it i loved that story so much um you're preaching and, to the choir here so and then and then i go into mass effect 2 right so i'm playing through mass effect 2 and where's garris where's <laughs> where's liara where's tally um so where's my crew <laughs> exactly exactly so exactly the same thing as you with percy jackson that's exactly what i was doing with um <laughs> and so um uh obviously the first mission you see tally uh so saw her but she she actually didn't join uh my crew so i'm assuming that she joins at a later time hopefully um if not whatever um uh but then obviously uh i found garris uh so yeah there was that archangel (laughs) yes archangel (laughs) specifically but um i'm gonna call him garris so um but yeah uh yeah just enjoying that um I I actually find myself enjoying some mechanics from Mass Effect 1 better than Mass Effect 2, which is crazy, I know. But um, the one thing that I'm missing is I keep pressing Y to heal and or I keep pressing up on the D pad rather to heal. And that's, that's how you would do it in Mass Effect 1. And like, I really enjoyed the ability to control my heals instead of, instead of like, Oh, you're good. You're about to die. Get behind cover, and then you'll you'll heal automatically. I don't I don't care for that. I like the I like the ability to heal um, myself. So I think that's the one thing that um, I'm missing. Otherwise, gameplay wise, like shooting wise and stuff like that. Yeah, it is it is better um, in Mass Effect Two. Also, I, why yeah. why do I have to reload? Like, come on, Mass Effect One had heat sink guns. Like, come on. Thank you. Right. <laughs> as long as you didn't overheat them, you could fire for freaking ever. Yeah, I know, yep. and I love that. But now I you know. can. Anyway, um, <laughs> other than that, um, obviously, I, I do I love mean, how they have to explain that in the game. No, 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 the shots are more powerful now. <laughs> yeah but i could fire forever before. right yeah exactly <laughs> um my the at the end of mass effect one my pistol i i never lost i never got, i never overheated it like never because i i had it modded so so much but um I, I anyway did the same thing with my assault rifle when i started overheating <laughs> i started feathering the trigger a little bit yeah anyway um i bit watched loki um uh, I'm not hot on the series yet. Uh, obviously, it's only three episodes in, but so far, I don't, I don't really care for it. Um, Ooh, so, hot take. Yeah, kind of a hot take. But, um, and then the other, the one, one other thing that I wanted to uh, just say and uh, say what I watched was me and my wife. We watched a uh, movie called Fatherhood uh, with Kevin Hart on Netflix. And it's about Kevin Hart losing his wife um, after she gives uh, birth to a baby. So the day after, and he has to figure out single fatherhood. So um, it was definitely worth the watch. Definitely go watch it. It's really good. So, nice. And it's a drama. Like, you know, obviously there's comedy involved. Kevin Hart's there, but, but it is, it is more of a drama and Kevin Hart's really good in that, that style of uh, character. So nice. Anyway, go watch that. Uh, okay. That's what I've been up to. Since uh, I can see him on both the left and right hand side of your screen there uh, with uh, the girls and showing them Avatar the Last Airbender for the first time, we're closing in on the, the end of book two. So I'm like, Oh, it's getting so good, <laughs> but <sighs> we'll get there. Well, then, then, then they'll know. Well, I have. Um, I'm just going to add in that we missed it in uh, February. We didn't mention that The Legend of Zelda turned 35 uh, this year. Oh wow! So Damn. I, I thought that I should bring that up when there was a, a Zelda game on the on the list for movies this this month. But good call. I'd seen good that call. a while ago. That you know, back we just missed a, missed talking about it on the podcast. So I thought I would acknowledge The Legend of Zelda has hit 35 years and, and it's still going strong. Nice. Are we just going to go around 
uh, Mike's stuff there. Um, I liked yeah. the last Spider-Man movie. I thought it was really good. Uh, <laughs> Godzilla, big fan. Uh, <laughs> I was listening some songs from the Goonies today. So oh, very nice, very nice. Uh, Truffle, shuffle, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> As much trying not to turn around to see what's behind him. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh. muted. Did he mute himself? Oh, I'm muted. Anyways, yeah. uh, I got this Darth Vader helmet at a garage sale. Um, and it's like I got it for five dollars, and it actually on eBay it goes for like 70 to 100 and I got it for five bucks. That's a steal. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. well, I mean, we have to add the podcast on that. Yeah. Yep. Until next time. Good night, everybody. Bye.